Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph, and that was Asaph Adonai playing... That we is my old Kentucky home. Yep. <laughs> nice. Is that like an old folk song? Yes, it is. Is uh, and they use it in the Kentucky Derby every year. Nice. Do they know who wrote the song? I'd probably go look it up. I'm sure somebody would know. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a great show for you guys today. Uh, we have... Somebody, uh, we have a guest from the Missoula Cinema on today, and they do a. Uh, it's the Missoula Outdoor Cinema, and they do this at the uh, on the north side. And uh, you'll learn more information as soon as we get them on. But of course, it is a nice, beautiful morning. You walk outside; it was such a nice day, don't you agree, Asaf? Oh yeah. Like you, th right now would be the perfect weather for eh, for the rest of the year, for forever, pretty much. But of course, it'll get hotter today. It'll get as hot as. 88 degrees outside. It is currently 61 degrees outside. The high is going to be 88 degrees. The low is going to be 53. And then this weekend you have a slight chance of thunderstorms. Um, but of course you'll have decreasing clouds and your lows into the 50s. But of course Sundays your high is going to be 82 and things will start cooling off for your um, 4th of July um, Monday. So of course 4th of July I'll tell you just a little uh, taste of what you guys can expect for your 4th of July But of course today is Friday and not only is it Friday. It's also first Friday So we there's I have a lot of uh, little art uh, Samples to show for you guys today, but uh, let's talk about a little bit about social media. So um, I got some um, so if you want to know more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice to you, we made you write it out twice. You can like us on our Facebook page. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow Missoula Community Access Television on Twitter at MCATTVMissoula. And you can also log on to uh, f uh, like us on Facebook. Of course, um, MCAT will be streaming a lot more now we just uh, installed a new uh, system that basically allows us to uh, do some live streaming on our Facebook page of the City Council meeting so for um, I think we're gonna try that out next week that's so that's the big announcement um, that's big news with MCAT is we're gonna try live streaming on YouTube and on Facebook and of course on our and on our channel as well like it always is on channel 190 for all our city meetings and, and beyond but of course uh, next Monday is July 4th, and there is no city meetings, but we will be here on July 4th for your uh, July 4th celebration, events, and more. But of course, um, I'm going to show you PSA, and when we come back, we'll have our guest on. No matter what you're planning, if you plan to drink, Plan to have a friend get you home. Get ride home ideas and tools at plantolive.mt.gov. Birthdays come and go, each year adding up to a lifetime full of extraordinary moments. At Missoula Aging Services, we promote the independence, dignity, and health of older adults. We are ready to help connect seniors to the help they need. Knowing you've got friends to support you, each birthday can be special. See how we can help. Call 728-7682 or log on to MissoulaAgingServices.org. Hi. Hey guys, we're here with Rachel Bemis and she's here to talk about the Missoula Outdoor Cinema. So please uh, tell us a little bit more about what people can expect. Um, from the Outdoor Center. Great, this is our 15th year, um, and so we have films every Saturday in the summer, so we have 10 films set up. Um, the best way to find out all of our information is either on our Facebook page. Um, so the Outdoor Cinema is actually put on by the North Missoula Community Development Corporation, so the North Missoula CDC on Facebook, or our website is nmcdc.org. Um, so just think about like going to the drive-in when right. you were a kid, instead you walk in right well and this is gonna be on the north side and yes it's at, uh, i forgot what the school is, is yeah it's Dickinson? the old whittier school whittier. yep old whittier um which is now child start or used to be head start and so we essentially have a screen up on the side of the building and everybody comes in nope. and and I, I like your times is like as soon as the sun sets. yes yeah and that's one thing that's nice about our website and i have our little postcards that you'll see around town um that also have the estimated sunset time as well so that helps cool so uh what kind of movies can people expect so 
we we work really hard to try and do a variety. So tomorrow night, um, Saturday, July 2nd, is our first show, and that's Mad Max Fury Road, so an action-packed movie. Um, we have Triplets of Belleville on the 9th, Back to the Future, July 16th. Our fans on Facebook actually picked that. Um, we'll sh be showing Smoke Signals, The Meaning of Life, Monty Python, Frozen for the Kids, Grand Budapest Hotel, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, Amelie and Pitch Perfect. So we, we try to wow. do a variety, date night, action, kids movie, things like that. This is a nice uh, cornucopia yes. of movies, genres, yes. and more. But of course, uh, let's talk about uh, who are some of the people who are sponsoring this event. Yeah, absolutely. So we have some wonderful sponsors. Um, MCAT is a sponsor as well. Um, we have a ton of organizations in Missoula that actually sponsor every year, and you can see those um, sponsors listed on our posters. Um, sometimes we'll do shout outs on our Facebook page. One thing that's nice about being a sponsor is we have different levels. So you know, all the way from 500 to 250 to 100. Missoula Federal Credit Union is another great sponsor. Um, we have a ton that just commit to doing it every single year, which is nice. Great. So uh, where can people find more information? Yeah, about? so our website, again, is nmcdc.org and our Facebook page, North Missoula CDC. We accept donations at the door. We sell popcorn, we sell drinks, and we sell candy. Nice. Well, yeah. is there anything else? I think that covers it. Always remember in the future that if you're ever interested in volunteering, um, you can contact us. Um, it's always fun to sell popcorn and be able to watch the film at the same time. Or if you're a business that would love to be a sponsor, please contact us in the future. Cool. Yeah. All right. Thank you Thank for joining you. us. Thank you. Thanks um, so much. And we'll be right back. We'll ha we have uh, all your First Friday events coming up right after this. Hi, Montana Hope. Yay. I am Montana Hope. I am Montana Hope. For the last 30 years, the Montana Hope Project has been granting wishes to Montana children who face life-threatening illnesses. I'm Montana Hope. To make a donation and help their wishes come true, please visit MontanaHope.org. We are Montana Hope. And we are back. And uh, let's talk a little bit about events. Uh, of course, I'm gonna go through the, um, the basic events that always happen all the time. Um, we'll start off with a little bit of cooking. So they're doing a cooking camp at Taste Bunch Kitchen. Um, they do pretty much do it all week, but of course they have a day-to-day -day drop in so you don't have to actually be there the whole week, but you have a chance to be there every single day. But of course you can save money if you do a whole week course, which is $195 for the whole week. And then of course $45 Per day, um, that's uh, it's their. Uh, how does dough rise? What makes cream freeze? And they want to make uh, red whoopie, red velvet whoopie pies. So that's their, that's their claim to fame for this uh, particular event that's going on. But of course, uh, the next one is Mismo Gymnastics. Uh, Mismo Gymnastics is uh, doing their uh, drop in at 9:30 this morning, and they're doing a uh, obstacle course with trampolines, foam pits, and this is from walking to 12 years of age. Uh, the next one is Tiny Tales at the Missoula Public Library, and this is from birth to uh, three years and uh, it's education story they usually do it at either the big conference room or the dragon room uh, another event is the family story time this is uh, happens three days a week at the Missoula Public Library and uh, they often often have themes for story times and they usually have it on the dragon rug unless it's otherwise specified um, the Children's Museum is doing some Mandarin so they have a uh, Mingzu, uh, their wonderful museum assistant, will be teaching Mandarin to kids and some adults who are interested because nothing's better than uh, learning a language with your kid. It also helps them with their language, but it also helps you uh, connect with them in a learning experience. Um, Spectrum Discovery Center is doing a uh, geology um, lab, so that's uh, wiggle worms, and of course, that happens at 11 a.m. today, and it's like 3.50. Um, say. Kids Table at the library, uh, the Missoula Public Library, in partnership with the Missoula Food Bank. Um, for kids 18 and under, they have, in the large bean room, they provide uh, food for kids who want it. You know, if you want to go get food, go get food, and it's from uh, 11.30, and of course, and they have an activity at 12. So that's something cool to check out. Um, Missoula Public Library, let's say, the, okay. Let's see. And of course, uh, they have a knitters and crocheters. Um, this is uh, yarns at library. This is 12 o'clock, of course. After the food, you can do some yarns, you can stitch, and you can talk. <laughs> 
and of course Taste Budge Kitchen is, uh, is doing a continuation of their camps so if you don't want to do it in the first part of the day you can do another part of the day and this is their uh, it starts at 1 this afternoon the hive is having a grand bazaar um, goods to all uh, descriptions for sales combined with some of the finest art in the valley and of course this is kind of like a Missoula made kind of fair mini fair that they have at the hive and that starts at 3 p.m. and then the hive is just off third street and again at the Missoula Public Library is the teen writers group so every sing every week um, every Friday from 3 30 to 5 30 p.m. if you're a teen and you like to write and you're looking for uh, a constructive criticism this is a great way to um, get better at writing and that happens from 3.30 to 5.30 at the Public Library. And of course, uh, 4 p.m. is the Missoula Butterfly House and Insectarium. So Missoula Insectarium will be feeding Rosie the Chilean rose-haired tarantula. And then it's every Friday at 4 p.m. They pretty much feed her every day, it seems like. This is one fat spider. Um, so um, first Friday, Ray Cruz is at, at Imagination Brewing. So coming with a rising star from Aux Austin, Texas, and now Missoula art scene, Ray Cruz will be showing his inspired creation specialized in a mixed media abstract and mixed media 2D art. Um, opening, it's called Vibrant Motion Oils by James uh, Work. And of course, I'm gonna move on and I'm gonna actually show um, some of you um, some of the art that's happening. And this one is uh, Joseph Kellogg, and this is going to be at the Western Montana Community Center. So you can check art just out, check out the art that looks exactly like this. So that's uh, what you can expect at the Western Montana Community Center, which is um, actually just, I think it's like right next door to the Florence Building. You, you can't miss it. They'll have a sign outside. Um, and then, of course, you have uh, the uh, another art installation happening at... Uh, Radius Gallery, and the, here's a little taste of what you guys can see. This is the Hakin uh, Bazard uh, Livze, and it's from June 17th through July 23rd, and the exhibits to new works by three talented, highly accomplished musicians. I'm reading basically what you guys can read yourself. Um, yeah, that's some of the art that's going to have at the Radius Gallery. Um, the next art that's happening is at uh, the Artist Shop, and this is, and it's located at the Artist Shop, which is 127 North Higgins, and this is some of the art that they'll be showing off there. Pretty cool. Some oils. Pretty nice. I don't know much about art, but I'd rather just kind of show and kind of tell a little bit about it and where you can find this art and learn more about it. And then there's uh, Berkshire Hathaway Montana Projects, and I think this is, I think that's that um, architecture firm uh, just uh, right next to uh, that uh, the bookstore, and you can check it out. Uh, this is some of the art that'll be up there. All right, the next piece of art I'm gonna show you guys is, this is some photography. Um, this is uh, gonna be at, at, happening at uh, La Stella Blue, and this is some of the photography that's gonna be uh, present there. So you can check that out. And of course, Gallery uh, 709 is gonna have some art, and it's uh, featuring Inside Montana Art and Framing. It's their gallery, and it's um, featuring artists Steve and uh, Bev Glukert. So you get to see some of their art as well. And Steve Glukert is the former um, curator um, at the Missouri Museum. So you get to check out some of his art. That's pretty cool. And then of course, here is Reflections. Their theme, uh, this is like at E3 Convergence Gallery. This is, uh, I think, I believe this is a photography. I mean, because here, check it out. This is kind of like what you guys can see at uh, E3 um, Convergence Gallery. It's just on, um, I believe it's on Main Street and it's by that uh, pizza place. You can't miss it. Um, the next one, oh, never mind. That's pretty much it for all your art stuff uh, for your first Friday. But of course, uh, if you're interested in traditional Irish music, Union Club has the traditional Irish music every Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, Teachers Recognition Day is at uh, Imagination Brewing Company as well. Uh, George Carlton, um, not the comedian, is gonna be at uh, Ten Spoon Winery at 6 p.m. And live bingo at the Dark Horse at 7. Fish, uh, Fishbowl Friday um, is going to be happening at Monks. Um, Band in Motion is going to be at the Union Club. Wild Coyote at the Sunrise Saloon. And of course, uh, Missoula's own local yoko at the Top Hat Lounge. And that's happening for your Friday. And of course, coming up next, I have a little taste of um, what you guys can expect for your um, musical notes with ASAF. So here, take it away, ASAF. Hey, Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Again? Nut-nut my sleeve. Presto, rah, and his big, um, 
rhinoceros head would come out. This here, we're talking about the adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle. This is the intro here where Rocky's about to fall off the cliff and he gets saved by his friend, Bullwinkle the Moose. So that was all I wanted to show on that uh, video there. I'll have to do some impromptu here. Let's go to the Wikipedia page there. There you go. Rocky and Bullwinkle, let's see. Um, it's an American animated television series that aired in 1959 to 1964, and it aired on ABC, NBC, and also CBS, and it's the, the producer was Jay Ward Productions. And um, let's show a couple of pictures there if we have one. Here's a clip here of Rocky and Bullwinkle, the intro here. And of course, the famous uh, dandelion. The, the dandelion. They, grow, they yeah. also grow from the dandelions. <laughs> yeah. Uh huh. That was amusing there. Now let's um, scroll down here a little bit. Um, characters? Yeah, the characters. Now the characters, the main characters, Ro Rocket J. Scroll was his name, known to the world as Rocky, and his best friend, Bullwinkle J. Moose. He's a dim witted but lovable little moose character, and they live in a fictitious town called Frostbite Falls, Minnesota. <laughs> Wonder what Minnesota for real thinks about that. And some of the. Um, the villains, the two main villains is Boris Badenov and Natasha uh, Fatali. So that's how that's pronounced. Yeah, but they always were known as Boris and Natasha. Yeah, Boris and Natasha, yeah. And they were always trying to scheme their way and they always end up getting in trouble. Yeah, they were supposed to represent the communism. Yeah, the, the Russians. Oh, the Russian Russians, yeah. Cold War. We win again. Yeah. And let's see, let's scroll down some more and then we'll show some more pictures here. Uh, let's go to where it says supporting features. Now, somebody, uh, they had some shorts in this Rocky and Bullwinkle. Like, they had Dudley, the Dudley Do Right. He was a Mountie, a parody of the 20th century silent film era. And then there was Mr. Peabody's impeccable history with Mr. Peabody and his pet boy, Sherman. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, there was Fractured Fairy Tales, which I played that theme earlier when you were interviewing that young lady that was on. That was the theme. My name is Asaph, and they always get my name mixed up with Aesop, spelled A-E-S-O-P, Aesop and Son with Aesop Fables. But I know I'm Asaph, A-S-A-P-H. Aesop and Son. Yeah, <laughs> and this is Aesop. Okay, let's go a little bit further. And then finally, we have um, Bullwinkle's Corner, and that's where he would like read a little children's story, and of course, um, let's scroll a little bit down to, um, where it says reception at the very bottom, right here. In 2002, Rocky and Bullwinkle was ranked number 47 in TV Guide's 50 Greatest TV Shows of All Time. And also up to date, it airs in 100 countries around the world. So even though this cartoon came out in the 60s, it's still very enduring and very popular. Do we have any other final pictures we can show? Oh yeah, we have lots of pictures. Let's show some of these pictures here. Here's just some pictures, Rocky and Bullwinkle here, one of their episodes. Do you know who the guy was? Oh, he this must guy? have been like one of those uh, unlucky uh, uh, slubs that um, ran into Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, I think they were on a cruise ship or something if I remember this episode. And this is the one where Rocky's gonna make an intro and Bullwinkle says, hey Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. And he never pulled a rabbit out of his hat. He never head. pulled the rabbit out of the hat. Now this is the, um, the beginning of one of the intros. They have four basic intros of this <laughs> series here. And this is the one where Rocky's um, gonna jump into this water and Bullwinkle freaks out and jumps in the water and then Rocky lands safely and so on. This is just another scene here. Um, they're fighting off the bad guys. <laughs> Our heroes in today's episode here. So, you know, your fans, I mean, your, your audience can just watch any Rocky and Bullwinkle and have fun from this cartoon from the past. It's one of the most enduring and fun cartoons in history, so. Yeah, well thanks ASAP. That'll be, that's my yeah. Yeah. And then uh, of course uh, we have a video uh, from the Missoula Art Museum and we'll be right back. Uh, yeah, let's show this show out. This. Oh wait, hold on. Uh, oh, camera I three. I back of that, yeah. Rocky and Bullwinkle, they can get that too. And there's characters on the back there too. <laughs> slow pan. Yeah, slow pan of Rocky <laughs> and Bullwinkle. But of course we'll be back with this art clip provided by our very own Rick Phillips and this is a little taste of what you guys can see at the Missoula Art Museum.
Welcome back. Uh, here is some of your events for your uh, Saturday. So let me get that queued up. Okay, so here are your Saturday events. Of course, every Saturday morning, um, pretty much morning and afternoon, they have the farmer's market. And they do that until 2 p.m. That's the, uh, the farmer's market, the under the bridge, Clark Street River Market, and of course the, uh, um, the people's market, or, or the, where you can, sell, you can buy all the knickknacks, t-shirts, and all this stuff that are uh, made by Montanans. And of course, uh, if you're interested in doing some yoga poses and pints for pedals, um, you can go to Imagination Brewing Company. That starts at 10:30 uh, a.m. tomorrow morning. So do some yoga, drink some beer, hang out, whatever. Um, da -da -da -da. Fact and fiction. They're doing a uh, signing, and if you know who Donna Love is, they're signing um, the book Bandit. Um, <laughs> 10:30 to noon, family storage time at the uh, Missoula Public Library. Um, there's Missoula Butterfly House at noon. Um, from 12 to 2, learn about the eight-legged anthropod that are native to Montana. Some of the spiders we'll be learning about are the ones like black widow, hobo, and orb weavers, spiders, jumping spiders, and more. So you get to learn more about that kind of stuff. And then, of course, I have the events events that are happening is uh, John Floridas. Uh, it's John Floridas. I pronounce it John Floridas. Um, no, it is Floridas. I guess it kind of rubbed off on me. But... Uh, John Floridas is at Imagination Brewing Company at 6, Malarkey at 6 p.m. at 10 Spoon Winery, um, $35 Poker Night is at uh, the Hilton, Montana's premier all-vinyl tango night uh, is happening at um, Missoula Winery and Event Center, and then of course Absolutely with Chris Moon is at uh, Badlander, and In Walks Bud is at Top ha Lounge, and I believe uh, the one th in the uh, their band is a progressive rock reggae funk and it's free so you can check it out and if you don't like it you can leave and you didn't spend five bucks okay cool uh, so that's it that's all you guys that's all I have for your events today but of course I do have some city council and I think um, this one is particular it really interested me um, because when I was watching it was like huh that's cool. So Parks and Conservation is teaming up with um, Missoula International Schools, Senior Center, and a couple other um, organizations so they can build like a community center. And it's it's basically, yeah, it's community center. They want to build a community center, but they also want to have, I'll explain a little more about later, but this is some of the background. Uh, since this is the background that they um, that I basically copied and pasted from the uh, the, uh, the agenda, their little item. And since 2000, Parks and Recreation has been working with community groups and nonprofits to develop uh, an intergenerational, accessible, inclus inclusive, cultural, and re recreational community center. The vision is identified as a community goal for Missoula's a millennial process in the 2004 Comprehensive Master Plan and Park, and Re Park and Recreation Plan and the McCormick Park Master Site Plan. Two sites are being explored. One is the McCormick Park as an extension of currents, and the other is the Missoula International School new site on Third Street, so the Hive. Um, so the Hive was bought by the Missoula International Schools, so the Hive is kind of doing their Hive thing for a little while, but then eventually it'll be a school for kids. Um, so this is Donna Glocker, and she basically explains a little more about it in this, in this clip. Uh, so there's been a lot of public effort around this. Uh, we've worked with local architects, we've worked with user groups, and this particular opportunity 
to me is one that we want to continue to pursue because when I look at return on investment for potential program services and delivery of services and meeting some of the critical goals of the partners and look at achieving that without necessarily having to go to a general obligation bond to expand currents at this time, especially in the face of the number of GO bonds that have been before voters recently, it seemed like a good uh, situation. Based on our... Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, just kind of the in and out of what's going on with this plan. Um, the next uh, part is, uh, of course, a big partnership between Parks and Rec with places like the Senior Center would pull together a 20-year lease agreement. And um, Emily Bentley is kind of concerned uh, about just 20 years. So this is what she had to say in response to some of the partnerships with some of the other organizations. I'm nervous about only having a 20-year lease. If we're going to be subsidizing this development, I'd like to see something more stable. I know 20 years seems like a long time, but you know it's one one childhood really. Um, so I, I guess I'm worried about subsidizing this big kitchen and the senior space, and then having it not be available for seniors in 20 years. Is there a way that we can? because they're not a government entity negotiate a, uh, legally is there a way that we can negotiate a longer lease for the seniors like a 75 year lease or something I mean because so the way I envision is we're paying the debt service on this huge facility and in 20 years and MIS could walk away and we will have put in all this money towards debt service and the community will be SOL, you know, I, I, I feel like there's not enough assurances in 20 years. So we'd be splitting the debt service on the shared use part of the building only. So it's not the city, sub, you know, so that's a really important part because there has to be public benefit. So we cannot build a school for somebody else, nor would we want to. So we'd be sharing the debt service. Technically, we're leasing. Yes, will they use lease funds to help them with their own debt service? Certainly, it, just like they'll use revenue from their schools and donations and all those things. As far as negotiating a long-term lease, once the city does that, as I understand it, we move outside of Montana Code annotated as far as a long-term commitment. The, the lease term is 20 years for it to not... Um, be documented um, debt. In this way, it's rent. Okay, so basically, um, what she's saying is that uh, the big uh, the big push for this idea for twenty year lease is they want um, the people who are leasing it to basically not own the place. It's like when you it's like okay, it's like when you buy a house and you have tenants, mm -hmm. and it really does help alleviate the cost of paying for your house. So it's like you buy a house. It's like oh, how am I going to afford? Fifteen hundred a month. I, oh, I like I only make uh, like blah blah blah. Like I only make twenty five hundred. So that's like way more than I'm willing to spend on my house. So get roommates, make them pay five hundred, and it, depending upon how big the house is, it really helps alleviate the cost. But yeah, they don't actually the buy it because yeah, it's whoever. So that's that's kind of what uh, the city of Missoula is doing, but in a larger scale and. Um, so that, that's basically what it is. It's a lease agreement, but of course it's also helping um, this, uh, the city buy and pay for this as well. So it actually, in, in, the, in the long run, it actually helps uh, alleviate the tax burden on people who are paying for this. Of course, some of the council members are, oh wait, let's see, where am I? Da, 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 da. Of course, some of the council members are concerned about the organization in terms of the memorandum of agreement um, extending to no longer the 20 years and once that time is up the city can kick them out so that's one of the um, issues and then Donna Glonkler um, responds to this um, um, potential issue in the future to move forward on a very long-term goal that the community has it allows us to meet the needs of several different demographics population socioeconomics and age groups the Senior Center is very pressed. They have about two and a half years left of operating cash and need to make some decisions on where their services and programs will go next. And so timing is important to them. We were looking at this as a, a lease opportunity, a financial decision in lieu of a significant general obligation bond. As I told you in early June, and I will tell you again, if money's no question, 
I'm going to say let's go for the GO bond and build a new facility at McCormick Park. But I know that money is a question. <laughs> yeah, so um, let's see. Where am I in the next part? Okay, so, and then this meeting, the purpose of this meeting is to promote a community center and to synergize organizations across Missoula, such as the Senior Center, Missoula International Schools, and so on. Um, so I have a copy of the actual uh, draft of the uh, community center at McCormick Park. So I'm just going to briefly kind of just go over it. Of course, this is like this is their pitch line. This is their plug. This is imagine a space designed for you with opportunities to engage in activities, express creativity, enhance your wellness, achieve new skills, perform in a sport, view exhibits, enjoy a community meal, meet new friends, or even attend a dance or music event. So that's kind of like their big uh, push to kind of like promote um, more foot traffic there, you know, because Currents is it's an indoor water park. It's mostly for people who want to go swimming, take their shirts off, that kind of thing. Um, but they want to do a community center where people can go there, maybe, you know, take some lessons. They have some lessons there. Uh, it's, it's they wanted to do so these are the kind of the bullet points is multi uh, generational inclusive recreation and education opportunities a lot of big words there uh, community support services affordable and adaptable gathering spaces for a diverse array of community performances concerts presentations ceremonies and celebrations a place to hold classes practices performances and overall enjoy and engage with the community so the city is definitely taking an appropriate steps forward in the parks and recs department for activities that are not necessarily about like going out into the forest and just hiking you know, you know what I mean? You're like, Missoula is the place where it's just like, you don't really need like an outdoor recreational like club or place. All you really need to do is just have a good pair of shoes <laughs> and just walk outside and you're hiking. It, it's that simple. And this community center is a good way for some people who are more indoorsy to go indoors, listen to music, enjoy some community building activities. And without uh, the severe uh, winters that we have here, which happen about five to six months out of the year. Yeah. So that's kind of like their big push, and this really kind of like stood out for me as well. But of course, they had like a two and a half hour budget uh, meeting that I kind of watched, and then I got bored, and then I just kind of moved on from there. Uh, uh, but of course, I do have a video I have I, I want to show you guys. This is from our past, um, um, what's that called? Uh, camp. We did a wildlife um, film camp not too long ago, and this is some of the stuff that they did with at Raptors of the Rocky with uh, featuring Kate Davis. Um, it, um, and these are the, some of the eagles. These are the eagles that were represented at the Raptors of the Rockies. So if you're uh, interested in ornithology, I believe, isn't that right? The ornithology is the right word for birds? Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Yeah, okay. So bear with me. Okay, without further ado, here is a video made by um, one of our kids at the uh, wildlife filmmaking camp. Well, I mean, here's Sonny, the bald eagle. He's not actually bald. Don't get any closer it's just how his feathers look, I guess. But, but Kate Davis has absolutely zero clue what happened. He's well, not on the I don't even know his age, but he's part really of his like wing got thing. clipped off or something. So one one of them is shorter than the other, and he is inching really close to the golden eagle who is right next to him. I don't know why he does that, considering that the golden eagle just scares him off. And he was... Dog, when he was a chick, so he has brain damage. Yeah. And he bullies Sonny, apparently. And the third golden eagle is Nigel, the extremely shy one that loves to stare at you. Yeah. And I believe he was hit by a car. He also can't fly, but he's extremely shy, seeing as how he's, like, completely away from him. Sunny and Max, maybe Mad, maybe he doesn't like Mad, Mad Max. Well, those were Sunny, Max, and Nigel in that exact order. They're pretty cool. I mean, eagles are awesome, but that's pretty much all. I was that. That's what I know of. See ya. Thanks, Thomas. And uh, if you want more information about our wildlife camp, you can out watch the whole entire um, um, videos that we've made with the kids um, over the last, uh, like two weeks ago we made it. And, and it's on our um, MCAT.org channel. So you go to MCAT.org. 
There, there it is, MCAT.org, and you can go to our video on demand. You click on this thing, and it brings you to our video on demand page, and you can go through here, and you can find some of the older videos, including our Raptors of the Rocky summer camp, and you can watch it as its entirety. But of course, if you want to learn more information about MCAT, you go to MCAT.org. You can make your own shows. Our orientation is happening uh, a week from Wednesday. Um, you could like us on Facebook. You could follow us on Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can also follow Ms. Wake Up Missoula on Twitter at Wake Up Missoula. You can also like us on Facebook. And of course, to find out more information, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice. We made you write it out twice. And um, yeah, we have a nice short show. I want to thank uh, Rachel Bemis for joining us. Um, Missoula Outdoor Cinema starts tomorrow night as soon as the sun sets. And it's at Whittier School on the north side. So you guys can check that out. Bunch of great art happening tonight. Uh, go check out First Friday, Fishbowl Friday, yeah! And also, um, thanks to ASAP for that wonderful story about uh, rocking Bullwinkle. <laughs> thanks! <laughs> so, um, for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I'm ASAP Adonai. Take it away!